This lesson deals with ideal voltage and current sources. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter two, starting on page 11. Let me first define an ideal voltage source. It provides a prescribed voltage independent of the current flowing through it. Here are some common symbols for voltage sources. The most general one is a circle with a plus and minus sign inside of it. I'll extend these wires out and call this voltage V, plus by the plus, minus by the minus. I'll define the current as going in the plus terminal. That'll be our default notation if we don't know anything else. And this is really any voltage versus time. But if you know that this is specifically a battery, a multi-cell battery, well then you could use a symbol like this where you have a long line and a short line representing the cells. You should just show two of these even though there may be more than two cells. And then we just use uppercase letters with uppercase subscripts to indicate a constant voltage versus time. Same V and I out here. We also have power supplies that are not batteries, but they're actually circuits that convert the wall outlet to a constant voltage versus time. We use just one long line and one short line. Again, the V and the I have the same direction. But in all cases, whether we have little V sub S, any voltage versus time, or a specific constant versus time, the voltage is specified, like a car battery, 12 volts. But I is not specified. It's really unknown. It can either be positive, it can be negative, or zero. Get a car battery on the shelf, there's no current coming out of it, uh, it would be equal to zero. If you have a constant voltage versus time, of course you could sketch that as a straight line, again, 12 volts versus time, but you also could plot the voltage versus the current. These are very handy pictures in electronics more than electric circuits, but let's just start to think about things this way. Suppose I have a V sub S, a car battery with 12 volts, the current I can be going in the plus terminal, it can be coming out of the plus terminal, or it could be equal to zero. This shows us what all the possible values would be for the current in that voltage source. Next, let me define an ideal current source. This provides a prescribed current independent of the voltage across its terminals. Look at this and look at the previous page. You see that the word current is replacing the word voltage and vice versa. In circuit theory, this is called duality. We'll see this over and over again in different types of electric circuits. Symbol for a current source is a circle with an arrow and then just labeling the value as being any value versus time. And I'll define the current as the same direction as the arrow. The default notation for the voltage will be that the current enters the plus sign and comes out the minus sign. Now, if you know that this current is constant with time, we use an uppercase letter with an uppercase subscript. But in all cases, the current is specified or known. The voltage is not specified. It's really an unknown. We have to solve for when we put this in a circuit. Now, if I sub S were constant versus time, we could sketch that simply maybe 12 milliamps versus time. But then you could also plot voltage versus current. And again, these are very handy graphs when we get to electronic components like diodes and transistors. So here we've got a constant current. It is a value of I sub S, and the voltage across it can be positive, it can be negative, or it could be zero. And this is the definition of voltage and current sources and some of their properties.